Good morning. Thank you for joining us today and welcome to today's webinar on COVID-19 solutions from viral detection to vaccine research and manufacturing. My name is Mihir Deshpande and I'm from Thermo Fisher and I'll be your host for today's session. Thermo Fisher Scientific as an industry leading worldwide trusted partner with end to end solutions for pathogen detection, vaccine R&D and bioproduction. With the COVID-19 outbreak, we are committed to helping clinicians, researchers, and industry for rapidly detecting as well as accelerating work on therapeutic vaccines. We have a very interesting program for the next 60 minutes, and we hope you will find it informative and valuable. We're pleased to have the following speakers from Thermo Fisher Scientific joining us today. Amit Chopra, who's the Managing Director for India and Middle East. Savita Bhusekar, who leads scientific support for life sciences solutions and has more than two decades of experience, including that of molecular biology research. Dr. Sangeeta Tathai, who's a PhD in biotechnology with 16 years of experience in biopharma research solutions, and Dr. Rajesh Bhagwat, who leads bioproduction solutions and has more than two decades of experience in healthcare and life sciences solutions. During the session, if you have any questions, please send them via the chat box at the left hand bottom of your screen. We will take them in the Q&A session at the end of the presentation. Without further delay, I would like to invite Amit to share a brief introduction on thermoposition. Good morning and thank you everyone. It's a pleasure to have you here with us today on this webinar and thank you very much for joining. I'm going to give you a brief introduction to thermoposition scientific and hand over to my colleagues for the core part of the webinar. Thermo Fisher Scientific is the world leader in serving science. We have revenues of more than 25 billion with more than 75,000 colleagues globally, 5,000 of whom are R&D scientists and engineers. We spend a billion dollars a year on R&D uh, and are one of the most innovative companies in the world. We are very proud of our mission, which is to enable our customers to make the world healthier, cleaner, and safer. Every day, all 75,000 employees of Thermo Fisher live this mission. In today's webinar, we'll talk about how we are living our mission in these unprecedented times and helping uh, our customers around the world uh, fight the COVID-19 menace. I want to talk to you a little bit about the unique scale and depth of capabilities of the company. We are a very diversified company and we enable our customers with some outstanding technology solutions in several different industries, such as healthcare, life sciences, applied markets, and pharma and biotech. You can see on this slide that the product lines and the areas that we work in are extremely diverse. Talking specifically on healthcare, our technologies in clinical diagnostics and in next-gen sequencing, in the PCR uh, uh, field have been absolutely instrumental in developing solutions uh, right in the beginning of the COVID-19 break, uh, breakout that happened uh, earlier this year. Thermo Fisher has a very large commercial and manufacturing infrastructure in India. As you can see from this slide, we have the largest uh, team in our industry with more than 1,200 customer-facing employees and about 2,200 employees across 42 locations uh, all around the country. Our industry-leading biotechnology capabilities help our customers accelerate discovery and innovation, increase lab productivity, accelerate clinical trials, and drive manufacturing efficiencies. With that, I would like to share with you a video that we made highlighting the efforts the company has made in the fight against uh, COVID-19. So can we have the video, please? Almost half the world's population is in lockdown. The volume of confirmed cases has risen at a dramatic rate, and so has the number of fatalities. Novel coronavirus, or COVID-19, has spread across the globe with devastating effect. Thermo Fisher Scientific's scale and depth of capabilities have never been more vital. And our mission, to enable our customers to make the world healthier, cleaner, and safer, has never been more important. But let's take a look back. The first case of COVID-19 was reported in Wuhan, China in December 2019. And we were there. 
On January 6th, our thermoscientific Techni Spirit Transmission Electron Microscope was used to characterize the pathogen. Over 1,200 boxes of our reagents and assays were then fast-tracked so researchers could rapidly develop tests. Meanwhile, scientists in Australia used our Applied Biosystem Seek Studio instrument to sequence the virus's genome and provide the roadmap for a diagnostic test. On January 30th, the World Health Organization declared a global emergency. And we were there. Our thermoscientific Cryos Electron Microscope was used by a team of researchers from the U.S. to show the first three-dimensional structure of the coronavirus spike protein, key to understanding how to target the virus. By February 19th, 14,000 new cases were reported in Hubei province, and we were there. In March, the World Health Organization declared COVID-19 to be a pandemic. Our real-time PCR test, which diagnoses the virus in four hours, was authorized by the US FDA for emergency use. It then received the CE mark in Europe, and now nearly 50 countries are authorized to use our test, which is based on our gold standard technology. As the virus spreads globally, we are producing more than 5 million of our COVID-19 diagnostic tests per week. At Thermo Fisher Scientific, we remain at the forefront of the fight against coronavirus. We're providing personal protective equipment to keep healthcare workers safe. We're modifying our production lines to make components for ventilators and produce hand sanitizer. We're partnering with pharma and biotech customers who are working on many of the top projects to develop COVID-19 treatments and vaccines. And that's just the start. There's a long way to go. But as one team, committed to our mission, we will prevail. We have much to be proud of. Thermo Fisher's COVID-19 India response has been in several areas. Most significantly, we have supported the diagnostic testing of COVID-19 in, in, in India. You may be aware that we were one of the first companies in the world to get emergency use authorization for our COVID testing kit. And subsequently, and this was in the US. Subsequently, we also got uh, authorization in Europe. And uh, at this point in time, our kits are being approved for use and are being extensively used in more than 50 countries around the world, including the countries like the US and UK, which have had the most significant uh, outbreaks of this pandemic. In India, our kit was approved uh, way back in the last week of March, and since then we have been able to uh, enable lacks of tests for COVID-19 in the country. Um, in addition to our testing capabilities, we also have the RT-PCR platforms, and more than 550 RT-PCRs are already installed in more than 93 cities all over the country which have enabled many of our customers to scale up testing uh, with the gold standard RT-PCR testing available in the world. We uh, also manufacture sanitizers for uh, our uh, customers. We also have been in the area of personal protective equipment. And most importantly, we have been very active in providing solutions to our customers for vaccine research and manufacturing. With this, I'm going to hand over to my colleague, uh, Savita Bosikar, uh, to take forward uh, our COVID-19 detection, detection solutions. Savita, over to you. Thank you, Amit. Good morning, everybody. I will start with a short recap of what many of us already know about the SARS-CoV-2 virus. The SARS-CoV-2, or novel coronavirus 2019, as it is called, is a member of the coronavirus family and belongs to the subgenus Sarbeco. It is a single-stranded, a positive single-stranded RNA virus, and its RNA sequence is about 30,000 base pairs in length. Like the other coronaviruses, the SARS-CoV-2 also has four structural proteins. The spike protein, S, envelope protein, membrane protein, and the nucleocapsid proteins. The N protein, that is the nucleocapsid protein, holds the RNA genome. 
and the S, E and M proteins together create the viral envelope. The image which is shown here using the Thermo Fisher cryo-electron microscope is the spike protein which is actually allowing the virus to attach and fuse with the human uh, cells which it has attacked. The 3D images which we have here are basically the virus receptor binding domain and the human cell receptor ACE2 which is thought to uh, actually initiate the virus into the human cells. Along with some other receptors, the ACE2 receptor helps the virus to get into the cell. So these proteins and the RNA sequence are very important because they are the ones which actually help us design the tools for detection and characterization of the virus. So one of the most reliable technologies for virus detection either in diagnostics or in research is the real-time PCR-based amplification and detection of viral target sequences. Thermo Fisher offers the Applied Biosystems brand real-time PCR platforms and gold standard Tacman assays, which are widely used for screening, confirmation, or detection, even for the asymptomatic COVID cases. Alternatively, we can also use the protein, which is the antigen information, to design rapid serological tests or antibody-based assays to detect an infection. So the major difference between the serological tests and the real-time PCR would be that serological tests help us to check either current infections or infections which have occurred in the past, that is for recovered patients as well. Both these real-time PCR and serological methods basically enable quick diagnosis or screening, and they allow us to look at large number of samples in a very short time span. The time span could be a few hours, six hours, eight hours. Okay, so these technologies are basically used for screening and detection uh, purposes. But there are other technologies which can be used to characterize the virus much better after it has been detected or isolated from patient samples. So along with these rapid detection technologies, Thermo Fisher Applied Biosystem brands also offer the capillary electrophoresis platforms such as the 3500 or Seek Studio, and the next generation sequencing platforms such as the Ion Torrent GenXus or S5 platforms, which basically enable us to sequence the virus and characterize it better. We have the AmpliSeq SARS-CoV-2 specialized panels for sequencing the uh, COVID-19 virus. We also have de novo sequencing technologies in the next generation sequencing, which basically enable us to sequence the virus. We also have something called as Colibri Library Prep, which are basic solutions for the next generation sequencing technologies across. The current phase of the pandemic basically requires us to test virus in large number of samples for both symptomatic as well as asymptomatic individuals. So these tests, which are performed in a majority of labs in India today, both ICMR as well as private labs, they're often very challenging because of the inherent nature of the samples. The sample here is either a throat swab or a nasopharyngeal swab, which is difficult to take and also difficult to characterize later. The virus particles themselves make the test challenging, the collection methods, and finally, the actual handling of lab specimens in the lab. All of these you know, pose a lot of difficulties to the labs. And it is best for a lab to have a kit which is well designed to take care of all their needs. We have the TACPATH. COVID-19 combo kit, which uh, as Amit has already referred, has already received the uh, US FDA emergency use authorization, which helps labs to offer results within eight hours of sample collection. The kit includes RNA extraction from the sample as well as the real-time PCR, and it has an intuitive software to report results. Extraction can either be a manual protocol using PureLink, or we have semi-automated 24 or 96 sample platforms such as the Kingfisher Flex, which is used in association with MagMax Viral Pathogen Kit, uh, the MVP1 or MVP2 kits, which are also part of the FDA EUA. So the whole combination of the extraction process and the real time together offers the labs a very easy protocol, which they can actually uh, deploy within a day of getting these uh, you know, instruments and kits. The real-time PCR reactions can actually be run on multiple instruments, such as the 7500 instruments in applied biosystems families, the Quant Studio, 
as well as some other uh, instruments which uh, you know we have from the applied biosystems brand the assay also has controls which are designed specifically to provide a robust test for three viral sequences in a single reaction so as the slide mentions we have the orf 1ab the s gene and the n gene these are the three genes which are used in detection of the viruses very specific for the virus we also have the control within the same reaction so it's a multiplex reaction for four targets along with the basic real time pcr platform which is used for detection and the kingfisher which is used for rna extraction the lab obviously needs a whole plethora of instruments which will help it to get the goal of uh, detecting large number of samples in a day so the work starts with using a biosafety cabinet thermo fisher has this thermo scientific class 2 type a2 biosafety cabinet which meets the required uh, nsf standards for any lab which actually offers molecular diagnostic tests it is important to have a quantitation of the nucleic acid which has been isolated from the patient sample because before you start with the actual test unless you have quantitated the nucleic acid it is not a very easy uh, process to go forth with the real time pcr or any other tests generally people use uh, uh, instruments such as the qubit 4 the elisa based multi scan uh, systems for nucleic acid quantitation we also have obviously the uh, most um, renowned spectrophotometry technology which is nanodrop we also have uh, you know simpler instruments which are the centrifuges the vortex mixers all of which go to make a standard laboratory and in the days of covid-19 detection we find that these tools enable the labs to quickly start processing the large number of samples that they have we also have some other accessories which help a lab in starting the you know detection process there are these micro test kits which thermo fisher scientific offers these are basically sample collection tools which enable uh, you know quick and safe transport of samples wherein the sample itself remains as effective as it should for detection and we also have the viability of the viruses maintained in these samples thermo fisher scientific also offers acrometrix controls which are used in quantitative or qualitative assays for viruses these are ruo controls which are made available with high quantity uh, titers as well as low quantity titers and these actually help in uh, optimizing the testing protocols and preventing false negative results we have a whole collection of fini pipettes from thermo fisher which are standard use equipment in any laboratory we have filter tips which are specifically made for these fini pipettes we have the bansted water purification systems which are extensively used in labs to ensure that the water is rna free since we are we are working with rna viruses we need to take all these precautions and then there is all the personal safety gear which amit has mentioned earlier you know thermo fisher scientific uh, takes pride in making all of these equipment which keep personnel safe while handling such infectious samples we also have a clinical chemistry system which which works on the principle of uh, detecting certain parameters which are known to have elevated levels in covid-19 patients so these are the c reactive proteins the ast the ldh alt all these different parameters which are normally tested for the physiological tests help us in detecting a covid-19 positive patient and we have uh, indico and indico plus clinical chemistry analyzers which basically help a lab to get these results in a very short amount of time so summarize we basically have an entire range of tools end to end solutions where we are looking at either antibody based uh, assays or we are looking at real time pcr based assays or we are looking at you know higher sequencing or next generation sequencing assays all of these are end to end solutions provided by thermo fisher scientific so with this i would like to actually hand over to sangeeta for the role of thermo fisher in covid vaccine research and development over to you sangeeta thanks savita so i would like to start by session by talking about what is being developed for the sars coronavirus 2 and the covid 19 disease so as mentioned earlier and as we saw in the video 
since the genome sequence and the structure of the coronavirus has been revealed, there are about 66 druggable targets that have been identified. And there are various approaches that people are taking to handle this disease. And broadly, if we look at, we can categorize them into three basic categories. The first one is the repurposed drugs. So uh, one of, this is one of the most available approach as we already have the drug, though it has been uh, approved for a disease other than coronavirus, um, like the antimalarial diseases like the chloroquine and hydroxychloroquine or the antiviral drugs like the remdesivir or the pevipiravir. So though we do not know much about the efficacy of these uh, drugs for this particular virus, but in the absence of other better alternatives, these seem to be a feasible option to be used for treating the disease. The second option that we have is the use of antibodies to neutralize the virus. These antibodies can either be developed in the labs, um, for which there are several candidates which are already reaching the clinical trials phase, or they could be uh, recovered from the blood of a recovered COVID-19 patient, which is what we call as a convalescent plasma therapy. Then the uh, very important and the long-term preventive solution that is being looked at is the vaccine production, which, is, which can be used for immunizing individuals against this virus. There are currently over 94 uh, vaccine programs that are running globally, and each day we are hearing more and more being added to it. So uh, when it comes to vaccines, there are several candidate molecules that people may use for their vaccine research. And each of these molecules comes with its pros and cons. The basic idea is to have a good immune response and train our immune system to be able to identify, fight, and destroy the virus before it uh, harms the body. So some of the approaches uh, being adopted are the whole virus vaccine, which is where a weakened virus is used um, as an immunizing agent. So Serum Institute of India, Pune and Codagenics are collaborating and working on this kind of an approach. Then the another approach is the use of viral vectors, which is where the sequence of the target protein is engineered into a virus, which is less harmful, like the measles virus, which has been used for Ebola vaccine, or the adenovirus, which is being used by Johnson & Johnson and Oxford University uh, for the coronavirus vaccine. Then um, another option is to use the virus-like particles, which is uh, essentially an empty shell of the virus. So uh, it, does, it cannot cause the disease, but it has proteins expressed on the surface, which can uh, immunize the individual against the virus. Another important candidate is the protein subunit vaccine. And many of the teams are working on the important spike protein, uh, the structure of which was revealed using our electron microscope or a key part of it from the binding domain. Then there are the nucleic acid vaccines, which are easy to use, where you are using only the DNA, RNA to produce the um, vaccinating molecule. However, this, since there are no licensed vaccines using this technology, uh, we need to look at the success here for the COVID-19. So uh, before we start talking of the workflows, we talk of, uh, about the needs of the vaccine researchers. So uh, whatever approach from the previous slide the vaccine researchers are taking, the needs of the researchers stay the same. So one of which is shortening the time to the clinic. The second one is to be able to produce high yields of vaccine candidates and very importantly be cost effective and, be, uh, and have the capability to be produced at a large scale. So what we are showing on this slide is a general workflow of uh, vaccine development. And the example being taken here is a protein subunit vaccine. There are, there are a large number of programs which are using this approach for the COVID-19 vaccine development. So the workflow starts with the pathogen identification followed by antigen production transiently initially, initially to have enough protein for doing these studies. Once the um, candidate is validated, then uh, it requires a stable cell line uh, preparation followed by the manufacturing of large amounts for the clinical trial and then get, getting into the large scale production. So uh, the whole process typically, uh, historically takes about 10 to 11 years of time to complete. Uh, however, for COVID-19, we do not have that kind of time with us. So, um, so companies and organizations are taking an approach where they are working on uh, uh, multiple steps of this workflow parallelly to reduce this time. 
And in such a situation, our solutions like the XP Cho or XP293 systems come in very handy to speed up the process because they come with an optimized set of all reagents required for completing this uh, protein expression workflow, including all the cells, the vectors, the media, the transfection reagents, enhancers, and all the required things for completing this workflow. So um, I'm going to be talking about some major um, workflow steps and one of which happens to be cell culture. So whichever approach is adopted for the vaccine research in a lab, at multiple steps, cell culture would form an integral part of this workflow. From Thermo Fisher Scientific, we provide a complete workflow solution for these cell culture steps, starting with the lung cell culture plastics of all types and the JITCO media supplements and the SIRA options to choose from. For the vaccines which involve protein expression, a complete expression toolbox is available. As I mentioned on the last slide, the XP, uh, XPCHO, XP293, and XPSF expression systems have been the most trusted solution for vaccine programs globally, as well as in the country. We also have the lentiviral expression systems which are required in certain situations and very helpful. So, and in addition to these expression systems, the accessory reagents like the transfection reagents or the electroporation devices are also available from Thermo Fisher Scientific to complete this work. When people are doing cell culture, cell monitoring and cell-based assays become very important and they would need to be performed in every vaccine research lab. And these assays could be of multiple kinds. They could be based on fluorescence, absorbance, chemiluminescence, so multi-mode readers like VarioScan Lux and the imaging platforms uh, like EVOS can be an asset to the lab where the cells might need to be monitored in real time as to how they are being impacted after the treatment. So uh, while we remember in cell culture labs to take care of all the reagents, the media, the sera, the plasticware, it is equally important to take care of the right kind of lab infrastructure to be able to maximize the productivity. So the kind of incubators, the centrifuges, the other ancillary instrument that the lab is going to be equipped with would define the pace and success of the experiments in the lab. So to highlight some of the, some of the products from Thermo Fisher that can help ensure that, I would like to talk about the Hera Cell Vios carbon dioxide incubator with the cell lockers. So this is an incubator which can be divided into six individual chambers, and each of the cell locker it becomes an it becomes a quarantine chamber. So it avoids the cross-contamination between the different chambers and helps you work on multiple projects simultaneously. In addition to that, the stackable shakers like the Max-Q8000 centrifuges from the, and the centrifuges from Sorvel, like the X4R Pro cell culture package, along with the NUNC biobanking, Orion pH meter, the multi-drop dispensers, and the general water baths and incubators complete the infrastructure for any vaccine research lab. The next aspect of a vaccine research lab is the structural biology. So as you heard in the video earlier that the structural analysis of the virus and the identification of the key protein receptors has been the critical factor to the understanding of the mechanism of the virus infection and deciding on the targets for the vaccines and the therapeutics. So Thermo Fisher Scientific has been at the forefront of the structural biology research with more than 90% of the structural data submission coming from the CREOS series of the, uh, the electron microscopes from Thermo Fisher. And the latest CREOS G4 cryo-electron microscope platform, it has the capability to reveal the structural details of the wide range of targets like virus or host cells at an amino acid resolution and that too in a high throughput manner, as can be seen from the fact that within three months of the outbreak, a lot of structural information was made available using this platform. So uh, this cryo uh, electron microscope is compatible with a wide range of targets from virus, from host cells, and small molecules. And it is making the study of the structures of virus and protein complexes much easier when compared to the other traditional techniques like the X-ray crystallography and the NMR spectroscopy. And this cryo, uh, the CRIOS G4 cryo-electron microscope, there are over 250 installations at multiple academic and pharma research institutions across the globe. 
So for the molecular biology part of the workflow, Savita has already discussed about the real-time PCR, the capillary electrophoresis, and the NGS platform. But all the molecular biology work on COVID-19 would start with nucleic acids to be extracted from a large number of samples and a variety of sample types. So the same Kingfisher platforms along with the reagent kits that are being used for the detection of the COVID-19 virus may be used for automating the extraction in the vaccine research labs as well. And once the RNA is extracted, either it is for the vaccine research purposes or for research on epidemiology or surveillance, one would need to reverse transcribe this RNA uh, into cDNA, followed by sequencing uh, for the mutations uh, using the next generation platforms. It could be the Illumina platforms, it could be the ion torrent platform. So for both workflows, we have solutions like the Colibri library preparation kit and the ion MPCX solutions uh, to help perform those um, studies. Uh, from gene to vaccine development workflows, there may be multiple steps involved. So it may involve gene synthesis, for which we have the in vitro gen gene art services. If it involves the mRNA synthesis, we have the therapeutic services. If uh, we require the affinity purification, we have the Dynabeat solutions. And for the transfection or the delivery of molecules into cells, we have the transfection reagents and the electroporation devices to uh, perform that. Uh, the other molecular biology essentials like the basic PCRs are also available from Thermo Fisher, including all the reagents and the plastic. And you, uh, you may notice that these are many of these instruments are cloud enabled, making it easier to control these instrumentations remotely and also allowing data to be shared between collaborators, which is becoming increasingly important these days. Then comes the important section of protein biology. So there are multiple approaches to study the protein, which require the specific instrumentation and the associated reagents. So there are four main aspects of any protein lab. First, starting with the protein isolation and purification, followed by protein gel electrophoresis and Western plotting techniques, immunobiology techniques, and the flow cytometry, all of which are very well supported by the Thermo Fisher scientific portfolio including all the accessories for the lab like the shakers, the mixers. So any vaccine program would require an evaluation of immune response uh, and also biomarker studies. So Thermo Fisher scientific antibody and immunoassay portfolio coupled with the next generation flow cytometer, the Attune NXT provides the researchers with tools like pro-quantum cytokine expression using real-time PCR, pro cardaplex multiplex ELISA case, and the multiplex gene expression using the quantigene multiplex assays using the Luminex platform, which have the capability of multiplexing up to 80 genes. And this can be very useful to study the immune responses as a whole, as well as studying the biomarker expression for toxicity evaluation of the various candidate molecules. So another aspect is the protein purification. So mass, spectros, mass spectrometry has become very important in co as a core analytical technique in vaccine analysis to perform the qualitative as well as quantitative analysis of the biological samples with high mass accuracy, sensitivity, selectivity, and specificity. So right from the first step of the vaccine design, mass spectrometry plays an important role in confirming the sequence, looking at the conjugate site mapping, and many other aspects by several possible methods like disulfide mapping, glycosylation mapping, uh, glycosylation site mapping, aggregation, and apitope mapping. So Thermo Fisher has all the relevant and essential analytical technologies like the UHPLC, HRMS, triple quad, columns, consumables, and the sample prep solutions to support the R&D, as well as QA, QC work um, to address this part of the work. So once the vaccine is developed and reaches the clinical trials phase, there's a lot of support that Thermo Fisher Scientific may provide for managing the trials smoothly and effectively. Fisher Clinical Services runs the world's largest clinical packaging operation with regulatory packaging and clinical logistic capabilities to deliver improved timelines and more accurate allocation of clinical trial materials. Our clinical trial project management expertise and expensive global reach comes in very handy to provide a service that integrates all these far aspects of the uh, clinical trials like uh, the regulatory, the packaging, the clinical logistics capability uh, to ensure a timely clinical trial. 
So starting with the project consultation, uh, where our team of project managers and our relationship with the sites across the world, uh, which help us guide in the selecting the most suitable packaging for the trials uh, that are to be undertaken in order to ensure the patient safety as well as compliance. We have several fully owned facilities supporting the ambient as well as refrigerated packaging that are strategically situated around the globe to uh, accommodate the local as well as the regional sourcing needs. So packaging can be performed in multiple ways. It could be blinded, it could be labeled, it could be randomized packaging, storing, delivery, keeping in mind all the um, temperature guidance around the uh, delivery. So post the successful clinical trials and due approvals, the vaccine gets into the manufacturing and the production stage. And I would like to invite Dr. Rajesh Bhagwat to uh, talk about some of the key aspects regarding the same. Thank you, Sangeeta. Good afternoon, everyone. And thank you for joining us today. Let's spend next 15 minutes to develop an understanding about key considerations, steps, and products which are required for commercial manufacturing of COVID-19 vaccine. The world is going through difficult times. There's an urgent need to develop a vaccine against COVID-19. Life science scientist communities and several biopharmaceutical manufacturing companies are putting their efforts together to develop a vaccine. As for the latest reports, research groups are working on 94 vaccine candidates across the world. Out of these 94 approaches, the, the three main approaches which are taking a lead are the protein subunit vaccines, the DNA vaccines, and the viral vaccines. Let's uh, take a minute to understand these three specific approaches. When we talk about protein subunit vaccine, it typically involves the, the viral spike protein or a part of receptor binding domain to develop an immune response. These proteins are produced in mammalian, microbial, or yeast cells by using a recombinant technology. If we talk about DNA vaccines, it uses naked plasmid DNA encoding the spike protein or, a vi or any other viral structure. And once it is ingested in human cells, it gets translated, uh, it, it translates the virus proteins and which triggers an immune response. If we talk about the viral vaccines now, it involves the use of a complete virus or a killed or a live attenuated virus as a vaccine. Once the select vaccine candidates move towards clinical trial and subsequent commercial manufacturing, the technologist needs to keep in mind that they need to develop a robust process that would support a huge manufacturing scale of dosage that would be required for the mass immunization programs against COVID-19. The manufacturing process for all the three vaccines would follow more or less a generic pathway with certain tweaks based on the type of vaccine, such as protein subunit or a DNA vaccine. The manufacturing process involves an upstream cell culture, harvesting, and then followed by downstream purification, formulation, and quality. Some official scientific offers technologies, products, and services that support the entire COVID-19 manufacturing workflow. So let's start talking about the upstream cell culture in, at the manufacturing scale. When the manufacturing approaches involve suspension cell culture approach, the high performance range of single use bioreactors along with the single use bioprocess containers are perfectly suited for mammalian cell cultures as well as microbial fermentation. The sub is fully functional bioreactor vessel, including single sterile contact surface for mixing, venting, sparging, and temperature sensing. The complete line of subs include a 50 liter to a 2,000 liter size that ensures consistent scalability from private pilot scale studies, preclinical to a commercial production. When the manufacturing approaches involves adherent cell sculptures, we have recently introduced 
high density cell factories which offer 13 and 53 layer plastic trays very high quality plastic trays and that offers more, about 30 percent more surface area and uh, which which provides better yields of cell culture while designing this these cell factories we have ensured that we use the same footprint and th that is where it provides uh, the, the ideal choice for cell culture other components of cell culture will utilize cell lines and cell culture media we offer robust cell lines with reproducible growth tighter and quality like xp2 and freedom2 cell lines when it becomes a cell culture when it comes to cell culture media we provide chemically defined media like the basal cell culture media dynamis or conventional cell culture medias like dnem as well as the custom production chemicals that include the gipco range of peptones enzymes and supplements some of the customers might choose to use stainless steel bioreactors and in these situations analysis of respiratory gases being fed into and removed from the fermenter will, it will become an ideal way to characterize the fermentation thermofisher scientific gas analysis ms prima pro provides a fast precise of gas analysis through every stage of fermentation and cell culture process. When it comes to harvesting and clarification steps, Solval centrifuge range with a 21 CFR compliant software for CGMP applications offers a complete solution. I would like to specifically talk about the Bio 16 uh, centrifuge, which, uh, which comes with two into eight liters rotor it offers an overall capacity of 16 liters with a low G force, and it makes a, 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 this product an ideal choice for cell harvesting. On the other hand, for clarification steps, Sorwal WX Plus cent Ultra Centrifuge is the best suited product for clarification applications. Once the harvesting and clarification is done, the process moves towards the purification step and which involves the chromatographic separation. For chromatographic separation, we offer the porous capture select range of cation and anion exchange chromatography res resins, which offers a better selectivity for the capture and polishing steps of downstream purification. We also offer the complete range of chemicals and plastic wear for the day-to-day -day lab work. Post purification, the most important thing that comes into, into mind is tracking of process-related impurities. For detecting impurities, including bacterial, fungal species, mycoplasma, and post-cell residual DNA, such rapid molecular kits offers high level of sensitivity. When it comes to quantitation of peptide antigens, estimation of strength and purity of the vaccine adjuvant formulations, liquid chromatography UV assays have been regularly employed. Vanquish Horizon UHPLC systems offer cost efficient solutions and are proven to improve the throughput of assays. For UV invisible impurities, Charge aerosol detectors offer near universal solution for the detection and quantitation of compounds. PEG, deoxycholic acid, surfactants, excipients can be effectively detected and quantified using CAD. CAD coupled with our Vanquish LC offers seamless workflow solutions for a broad range of, employed, uh, of compounds employed in vaccine formulations. Raw material characterization, tracking process-related impurities and excipients are key to process characterization. Antares FTNIR spectrophotometer and DXR Raman microscope are excellent tools to support and track your entire manufacturing process. Ion chromatography is one among the global standards for analyzing carbohydrate composition 
in glycoconjugate vaccine preparation. This technology is globally accepted and routinely employed to understand the composition, consistency, and purity level of poly or oligosaccharides counterparts of the conjugate vaccine. High end IC6000, along with conductivity detector and electrochemical detector, supports this application. During the entire process of vaccine manufacturing, microbial, microbiological quality control is the key to ensure the safety of vaccine. Thermo Fisher Scientific offers a complete solution for microbial testing that includes dehydrated media supplements for environmental monitoring of the clean rooms. We offer the lab serve TWI plates. We also offer gel preserved ATCC strains for the growth promotion testing. For the sample storage at every step of vaccine manufacturing, we offer a wide choice of refrigerators with temperature range of minus 80 degrees centigrade to plus 4 degrees centigrade. Once the, the vaccine product is manufactured, it is packaged in glass vials or ampules. For, for this particular fill to finish application, Thermo Fisher Scientific also offers solutions like online check wares that ensures the quantity of vaccine product and x-ray inspection equipment that ensures that there is no glass residue left over in the glass vials or ampules. In summary, Thermo Fisher Scientific offers total solution of vaccine research and production from instruments to equipment, chemicals to consumables, and data management software to clinical services. For this, I would like to hand it over to me here. Thank you, Rajesh. We will now be open for the Q&A. We have a panel of experts from various areas of expertise. If you have any questions, please send them via the chat box at the left-hand bottom of your screen. We've already received a few questions, and uh, let me start uh, taking a few of them. Okay, here's the first question. What are the major challenges in developing the vaccine for COVID-19? As the world is suffering from the pandemic and close to 3 lakhs people have already died. Ramesh, uh, would you like to take this uh, question? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Mihir. Yeah, it's a very valuable question at this point in time. So worldwide, if you see more than 3,000 strains have been sequenced of the SARS-CoV-2. Uh, the, the virus that causes the COVID-19 disease. And we have basically understood the variability, uh, the mutations uh, have been ascertained as of now. There are also few country-specific strains and understanding on the specific plates. Uh, that is also the understanding has emerged to as of now. So if you see, there are several aspects that has to be considered before finalizing a vaccine candidate. As of today, as you see from Rajesh's presentation, there are more than 100 plus potential candidates identified. India, for example, is betting on 30 plus candidates as of May, and with several companies also joining the race for uh, making a COVID-19 vaccine. It typically goes through pre-IND and IND phase clinical trials, after which efficacy and safety studies have to be done. So in an ideal situation, it might take around three to five years. You can understand the challenge that we have at this point in time. And then we also have this mass production that has to be done to cater to the global population. So we reckon that it's a fast track approval is also possible. And a typical lead time might be around 12 to 15 months uh, as, we, as we see at this point in time. Thank you. Thanks, Ramesh. And uh, team, I just wanted to introduce you to the panel of experts we have. So uh, you know what, who you heard right now is Dr. Ramesh. Uh, who is part of the cell biology and synthetic biology team. Uh, we also have Dr. Sarvanand Kumar from Proteomics and Biopharma, Prakasam um, and Anil Pissel for uh, electron microscopy and molecular spectroscopy, uh, Ankush from the chemical analysis division, Tanay, uh, who is an expert for lab products, consumables and chemicals range to Thermo Fisher, Kajal uh, from microbiology team, and Dr. Tej Bajar for the clinical trial uh, services. 
And we also have this next question. Uh, what is the accuracy level of results for diagnostic tests? Uh, Savitha, uh, would you like to take that? Hi, Mihir. Yes, thanks. So uh, the kit is developed with a uh, positive control provided in the kit, which is used at uh, 50 copies per reaction. And the limit of detection of the kit as the FDA EUA approval is 10 copies per reaction. So that is what we have already, you know, uh, validated, uh, which can be used as the uh, accuracy level. And of course, all the strains that have been used in characterizing or developing this kit, we have ensured that there is no cross reactivity with other strains of viruses, and we will pick up only the novel coronavirus. So accuracy in terms of picking up the right virus and picking up the very low copy numbers, both of that is assured. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Savita. Uh, and before you go, actually, there's there's one more question that you might be able to address. How do I product yeah. myself while I'm a lab technician? So there are uh, there are several products from Thermo Fisher, but I would like to say that you know the most important thing is follow the guidelines by the authorities WHO, CDC in India. It is ICMR. The guidelines are very clear. We have to use a BSL two or BSL three facility with a class two uh, biosafety cabinet, which can be used for extraction. And I already showed it in my presentation some time back. So uh, we have a biosafety uh, cabinet which can be used for safer handling of samples. Very important to remember that the sample uh, has active virus uh, in it. Uh, and the first stage of extraction of RNA is where the virus will get inactivated. So till that point, till the sample is actually enough, the virus is inactivated, one has to be extremely careful. One has to use all the PPE, you know, the, the coverall, the mask and goggles and gloves, everything and uh, definitely use a lot of sanitizer in the whole uh, lab facility. So one has to be extremely careful when the samples are being transported from the place to the actual biosafety cabinet. And within the biosafety cabinet area, one has to be careful till the, the virus is inactivated. And of course, the samples should not be, you know, definitely not mishandled anywhere in the lab. So these are the guidelines for uh, safety for lab technicians. Thank you, Mihir. Thank you, Savita. Okay, this is this, this question. How to ensure the quality of nucleic acid during extraction or purification stage? Uh, Anirudh, uh, would you like to take that? Yes, Mihir, and uh, thank you very much. Uh, so it is very important to identify the purity of nucleic acid before going for such a downstream application. So to answer this question, uh, if there is any reagent or contaminant remain during extraction and purification stage, that can be easily detected by a nanodrop microvolume spectrophotometer. It is a very good quality control tool uh, for such applications. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Anirudh. Uh, okay, there's, there's one more question. Uh, what is automated RNA extraction? Please explain. Uh, Dr. Sangeeta, would you like to take this one? Yes, thanks, Mehir. So when we say automating RNA extraction, so any RNA extraction protocol has multiple steps like proteinase K, uh, incubation, then binding of nucleic acids, washing of the impurities, and finally eluting the nucleic acid. So all of this when done manually requires a lot of aspirational, uh, aspiration of liquids and all. So when we automate, we basically remove these steps and all of these steps are done automated. So what this helps us do is process large number of samples, like 96 samples in less than 30 minutes, and at the same time, minimizing the errors when handling such large samples. So that's, that's what is automation of nucleic acids. Thanks, Angita. And team, uh, you know, if you have further questions, I can see uh, a lot of uh, questions that are coming our way. Uh, if we are not able to address all of them uh, on this call, uh, rest assured, we'll reach out to you uh, on an individual basis and uh, do best to address all your queries. Uh, you can also reach out to us uh, after the webinar for any additional information that you may require. Uh, so here's a question on vaccine manufacturing. What do you think would be key priorities for vaccine manufacturers in India? Uh, Rajesh, would you like to take that one? Uh, Rajesh, I think you will mute, uh, if you can unmute yourself. 
Sorry about that, Meher. Uh, thank you for the question. Uh, so, Meher, what I believe is the Indian vaccine manufacturers has uh, an experience uh, in large volumes of vaccine doses. So that's that's the experience. What they would uh, take it handy, and what they would be, uh, they would work on is a tech, tech transfer model. This is my assumption that they would uh, get a technology from a university in the U.S. or Europe or uh, in other parts of Asia Pacific, and from there they their strength is to scale up uh, and uh, do the manufacturing in India. Uh, when they would plan their manufacturing in India, what they would require is dependable suppliers and who can supply them equipment quickly. And also they would need uh, uninterrupted supply of consumables as well. Uh, given the current pandemic situation of COVID-19, uh, time and speed to market is going to be the key uh, for this vaccine development. Thank you. Thank you, Rajesh. Uh, that was very helpful. Uh, there's a question on cryo-electron microscope, uh, Prakasam, you may want to this one. How is cryo-electron microscope being used for vaccine development? And how many of them have been installed in India? Sure. Uh, thanks, Meher. Uh, the electron microscope uh, revealed the first structure of COVID-19 in USA, China, and in India from NIV Pune. This method is very useful for the structural analysis of virus, spike protein, and also the spike protein complexes with cellular receptors. Uh, Cryo-EM uh, plays a very important role, not only in the drug discovery, but also in the quality control of vaccine and antibody uh, during the manufacturing process. To answer your second part of the question, we have about 300 installations in India, out of which, 50 are in life sciences segment, for example, pharma, biopharma, hospitals, universities, and academic R&D laboratories. Thank you. Thanks, Prakasam. This is very helpful. Uh, there's a question on HRMS. Can Thermo Fisher HRMS be used for both conjugation site and uh, glycosylation site mapping? And can this be coupled to front end other than routine UHPLC? Uh, Sarvanan, would you like to take this one? Yeah, thanks for the query, Meher. In, in fact, it's a very interesting question. Yes, our HRMS platform is capable of detecting all the attributes of uh, vaccines, specifically the protein and VLP based vaccines. It can, uh, in fact, uh, know, authentically identify the conjugation sites, the glycosylation sites, and other routine attribute methods as well. Thank you, Sarvanan. This is very helpful. Uh, we have a question for clinical study. Uh, Dr. Tej, you might want to take this one. Uh, what all specific support uh, we can look forward to on our vaccine clinical trial study? Tej, are you here? I, uh, probably you're on mute. Okay, we'll, we'll try and reconnect with uh, Dr. Tej. I think uh, there's a network issue. Uh, there's one more question that has come up. Uh, uh, okay, on this one. So, Ankush, you might want to take this one. Can we get good accuracies at high speeds using a checkware? Uh, thanks, Meher. I can understand uh, how pertinent this question is, considering that productions uh, will be are expected to scale up uh, in the uh, near future as soon as the vaccine is developed and we get into advanced phases. So yes, uh, as such, we specialize in high-speed uh, configurations for our uh, series of checkwares. If I cite an example, we have gone as high as uh, 500 units per minute. Uh, and that uh, actually translates to a very high linear speed uh, when we uh, take into consideration the size of the package itself. Uh, so yes, for high speed applications, we still have uh, uh, solutions available in the checkware product. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Ankush. And uh, I just realized probably Dr. Tej Bajaj uh, is not able to connect. So, but to you know, answer your question, 
uh, you know, for vaccines, the key word is cold chain. So we can provide secondary packaging, blinding solutions at secondary level, supply chain solutions for storage, transportation to sites, all the time maintaining cold chain. And additionally, we can address reverse logistics and destruction services for end-to-end -end supply mapping as well. So, you know, we can address the ancillary sourcing part depending on the study design. And if you have more questions or more queries, you know, please write back to us and we'll be happy to uh, address this. Uh, there's one more question. Uh, Ramesh, you might be able to address this one. Uh, interested in detailed information and product range for development of CRISPR-Cas based diagnostics. Uh, would you want to take this one, Ramesh? Uh, so back in September 2019, Feng Zhang's team basically published uh, a protocol. This protocol is called Sherlock, which uses CRISPR and then the Cas13 uh, isoform of Cas protein. So Sherlock stands for Specific High Sensitivity Enzymatic Reporter Unlocking, which basically allows multiplexing, it is portable, and also an ultra-sensitive detection of RNA or DNA uh, from the clinically relevant samples. In this case, it is COVID-19. So Thermo Fisher offers the complete toolbox, except the Cas13 protein, which can be done as a custom for for sort of COVID-19 detection. Also, there is a group in IGIB that has modified Sherlock as Feluda. It is Dr. Devajuti's team, so which is CRISPR-Cas9 system for identification of COVID-19. So yes, uh, short answer, Thermo Fisher offers the complete length and breadth of uh, consumables from the cell biology uh, franchise. Thank you. Thank you. And team, I know that we are already on 60 minutes of our time, but uh, since uh, you know we have some interesting questions, I may be extending it for a bit while so that we can cover some of these questions. Uh, here's a question, uh, probably Kajal, you might be able to address this. Uh, what component in the sample collection kit aids viability of the COVID-19 virus? Kajal, would you want to take Thank that you. one? Sure. Thank you for the question. Uh, the viral transport media, which is for, uh, a composition of uh, form, uh, patented formulation, which contains antibiotics, uh, protein stabilizers, and buffer, which will help in virus maintenance. And it uh, maintains the pH and osmolarity at a particular uh, level, which is uh, required to uh, required for the viability of viruses. Thanks, Kajal. Uh, there's a question on biosafety cabinet. Uh, uh, Tanay, if I can uh, request you to address this one. How design of Thermo Fisher biosafety cabinet ensures safety of laboratory personnel as COVID-19 is highly communicable? Hey, thanks, Meher. And I think it's a, it's a very important and a very relevant question uh, given the level of uh, viral and active component that we are dealing with. So the Thermo Fisher biosafety cabinets uh, today are uh, globally a gold standard in terms of the biosafety cabinet families. Uh, they are compliant with the most stringent norms of NSF uh, certifications, which also ensure that uh, the right level of security in terms of safety for the sample user and the environmental protection. And features such as the smart air flow uh, ensures that there's a balance of inflow and outbound flow uh, for the, within the biosafety cabinet that helps the safety of the user and from the viral active samples. Uh, thanks, Meer, and uh, over to you. Thank you, Tanay. Uh, okay, there's one more question. What should be the detection strategy keeping in mind the size, speed, and segment of the Indian scenario? Uh, Sarvanan, would you want to take this one? That's a uh, you know, very interesting query. Uh, based on the size and the, you know, the rate at which the Spreading, depending on the population of our country or any other country, currently rapid test should be the you know get to go of choice. Uh, the whatever diagnosis kits that we have is it's either the RT PCR or the antibody based. It takes time and you need to have a dedicated laboratory setup, right? So we need to have some rapid, like say a pregnancy kind of a kit or home based diagnosis kits. That should be the strategy. Hopefully, we will be seeing such such kits or such diagnosis measures coming up in the market. Thank you, Sarvanan. Uh, here's one more question, Amit. Uh, you may be uh, 
probably able to address this one. How is Thermo Fisher building local capabilities to support the COVID-19 research and development? So Thermo Fisher has been building capabilities in India for many years. As an example, we have uh, two R&D centers, uh, one in Hyderabad and one in Bangalore, which we've been working on several technologies which broadly go into analytical instruments and into biosciences. These are part of our global R&D uh, sort of, um, uh, you know, centers uh, which work with, for global product development. In addition to this, we have had, uh, we have a large uh, footprint of manufacturing facilities uh, in the chemicals area as well as some analytical instruments uh, as well as clinical trials. Uh, which is uh, based in Ahmedabad, uh, Pune, and um, Nasik, as well as some factories uh, near Mumbai. So I think overall, when we look at the localization or Make in India initiative of Thermo Fisher, we have been active for many years and we'll continue to develop that. Specific to COVID, I would say we will uh, continue to evaluate opportunities of localizing. Uh, however, at this point in time, uh, you know, we are very deeply committed to expanding our overall R&D and manufacturing uh, capabilities in the country. Thank you, Amit. Uh, Kejal, is uh, one question for you. Is the viral transport kit approved by ICMR or NIB? Thank you for the question. Our kits are approved by US FDA and ICMR accepts all the products which are approved by US FDA. Thanks, Kejal. Okay, we'll we'll take the last uh, couple of questions. Uh, okay, here's here's a question: uh, Is Thermo Fisher making a vaccine for coronavirus? Uh, Rajesh, would you want to respond to that? Sure, I mean here, uh, Thermo Fisher uh, it is not manufacturing the COVID vaccine. Uh, Thermo Fisher's mission is to enable its customers to make a vaccine, and that's what what we are supporting all our customers. Thank okay, you. great. Uh, so, team, thank you very much. Uh, uh, you know, and thank you for your enthusiastic participation through the Q and A. Uh, we've received uh, a lot of questions, and uh, uh, you know, I, on behalf of the team, uh, promise you uh, that we'll get back to each one of you with your respective uh, responses. There's one more option that you have. Uh, if you look at uh, this slide, what we've done is we have listed down the upcoming webinars. Uh, that have been uh, planned and uh, you know uh, you can uh, either uh, look at our website or uh, reach out to us for registering on the uh, webinars so these are the webinars i'm going to take a pause for 5 to 7 seconds so that you can look at the list and uh, see if uh, any of this uh, is relevant for you so now we have come to the end of the webinar Thank you everyone for joining us today. Uh, please feel free to reach out to us for more information. We would request your feedback while you are exiting the session. Uh, there's a feedback icon to the right hand side center. Uh, you can click on it, uh, give uh, your feedback and that would be very helpful for us. So with that, I'll close the webinar today. Thank you very much for attending.